We all know New World Season 2 is right around the corner, but what can you do right now to either make money or just generally prepare? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. So let's jump in. Now you may have actually seen this first one but we have to talk about gypsum because there are some pretty big changes coming to the gypsum kiln. The first obvious one when you actually get to the gypsum kiln is simply that there are these new legend ones just right behind me right here. These legendary ones are what you would expect. You guarantee a legendary item. Obviously it's random but it does cost you five gypsum orbs and it costs you 1000 dumbbell shards and you know what i'm gonna test the shield one right here so we'll craft one of the shield ones and we'll just craft one other so the normal one the headgear as i said we're gonna get a legendary item it can be good can be bad this one has resilient and angry earth which to be fair they said they were going to reduce the amount of the times that that occurs apparently that failed right here right now Hopefully they can sort that out because that is something they spoke about in one of the dev updates. And then for the shield one, I'm guessing it's actually going to be purple. It is purple. I just wanted to check it. I'm pretty sure I'd already checked it before, but you can see it is purple because you don't really get legendary shields anymore. Either way, you get legendaries mainly unless it's a shield. That might be something you want to do if you're holding on to a lot of gypsum and or umbral shards. But there's some extra changes at the gypsum kiln that maybe you might not have known about. The first one is actually the cooldown. Now you may have seen this, but basically now you can craft seven every week instead of it being one per day you can now craft the actual cast themselves at seven per week so it might be worth holding on to the orbs and then you can pick and choose which one you want do you want umbral shards you get the normal gypsum do you want legendaries well then you can craft the legendary version of this but yeah interesting change that and then these have actually been buffed a little bit the amount of expertise you get is a little bit increased i wouldn't really recommend anyone holding on to it just for that reason but worth noting nonetheless now still speaking about gypsum some of the gypsum you can get has now been increased so you can actually get two emerald gypsums a day these are the ones from your aptitude chest and i think the ones that you get from the portal you can also now get more of them per day the aptitude one is the one that really gets me there's many times where maybe i've not played for a day and i actually just want to refine and do my crafts and then oops i actually would have got two aptitude but i only got one because you can only get one per day so that change is actually the best one for me now i can't really show this one off on the ptr because there are actually no major breaches on the map right now now but major breaches i.e from the corrupted portals you're probably going to want to hold on to the well actually just hold on to the boxes themselves and that's because the loot inside them can now be upgraded to 600 like you can with outpost rush items invasions and war items what's good about that is if you get a train and you're going around to all the major breaches you can pretty much find them almost non-stop if you will so a lot of chances there to get a random good 600 item from that because as i said every time you upgrade it you get a decent item you get that chance of that third perk so if you're upgrading a two perker then there's always a chance you can get something really good. Worth noting that you might just want to save opening them for now. One thing you also might want to do is simply to save your faction tokens right now. It's a little bit hard to show you this on the PTR because there's actually a bit of a bug and I can't go past tier 4. But the rewards have changed. More stuff has been added. And there's sort of two types of player that will want to do this. Number one, all of the faction gear... You might be like, oh, it's got a legendary version. No, these are actually just skins. So all of your faction appearances now have skins that you can go ahead and buy. But keep in mind, they actually cost quite a lot. Here it costs 50,000 tokens and then 7,500 gold. At the minute, the cap on live, I think is 75k. I'm pretty sure on the PTR and when this patch goes live, it's going to change to 150k. But if you wanted to get ahead, then make sure you're sort of near that cap. There's a couple of other items that you also might want. So the one that is sort of causing a lot of confusion are these trophy ones. The ultimate combat trophies, the ultimate crafting trophies and the ultimate gathering trophies. Some people don't really understand how they work. The way that it works is that you would need all of the combat trophies. So one of each type, beast, ancient, lost, corrupted, etc. You need all of the major ones of them and then you would buy the ultimate combat trophy and combine all of them into one trophy. If you have that three times, because obviously if you're a professional you're going to have it in all of your houses, then you will need this three times. And as you can see, it's quite expensive. It's 100,000 tokens and 45,000 gold. So if you do have the 18 major trophies, the major combat trophies, it'll cost you 300,000 faction tokens and 135,000 gold. 
Now, if you did that for all of these, then, you know, the numbers are going to get pretty high. There's not much you can really do apart from saving your gold and what little of the faction tokens you can actually hold on to with the cap that we have it. And now let's talk about the raids and the seasonal trial. So I've come to here, which is the hatchery. This is the seasonal trial. And just because a lot of people are struggling to find it, it's under the actual town of New Corsica in Brimstone Sands. And it's north of this shrine here, the Cavalry Shrine. It's pretty much slap bang in the middle. A lot of people simply teleport here and then run north but then you actually come to it. Obviously, it's a 10-man seasonal trial. I'm not really going to talk too much about like what this is right now. What I am going to say is that this seasonal trial is effectively Varangian. So if you have your human ward stuff, then or you don't have your human ward stuff, you might want to get some and you might want to level it up. Now, this is actually not too difficult. I actually saw a group that was two-manning it. It did take a little while, but they made it with just two-man. Once you've learned the mechanics, it's not too hard. But if you're maybe not a great player, maybe you do want to make sure you've got that human ward so you can complete it and the fire gems, the ruby gems, because there's a lot of fire going on in there. What's interesting about this is that it does appear that there's some sort of like soul version of it, but you can't unlock that on the PTR right now because the quest is broke, the main quest. Now, it's not actually in the PTR right now, but we all know that the sandworm is coming and you may want to prepare for that if it's something you are looking forward to doing it's obviously going to be about here we're pretty sure it's going to be here but what do you need for this well we have it confirmed that it is going to be beast ward and it's going to have some kind of acid now speaking of acid obviously you can go get your beast ward gear that's fine but you also might want to get chitin padding now the chitin padding is basically the gem uh, version of acid resistance you'll be able to put that in any gear but you're probably more likely going to put it in something with beast ward because that just makes sense now you do get a lot of medium con beast ward gear whilst you're doing the season two quest however if you want light or you want heavy it might be worth prepping that with some crafting and stuff like that and you can see some of that stuff here now if this isn't to your liking you might want to craft otherwise worth paying attention but what does this also mean? It means you might want to pick up some stuff on live that you will need. For example, I personally crafted myself three major beast trophies because I really want to do the raid. So I'm going to go everything that I can to get that done. You could also maybe try and make some money off some infused beast coatings. I don't know how much they're going for on live right now but you can get them, you can craft them yourself right now if you want. I actually think because of the cross realm outpost rush, the raid and the seasonal trial, a lot of people are going to be doing a lot of content and I think it might be worth just preemptively buying some infused health potions and some infused regen. The infused health potions are really damn cheap, but the infused regen, not so cheap, generally around six gold on my server. One thing that's a little bit hard to demonstrate and I don't necessarily think it's worth like even really holding on to anything for, salvaging is actually getting a little bit buffed in this patch we believe, so if you salvage any of your gear, there's a higher chance that you're going to get a perfect salvage and get more stuff back. I don't necessarily think it's worth holding on to your crap gear because your inventory would just be absolutely unmanageable, but just worth noting. One thing that I'm not going to try and actually understand because it's too complicated for me is fishing. I'm just a dumbo and I don't quite get it. However, Fivehead, the man who really knows fishing, he says right now it might be worth selling your fish roll and your fish sauce. And if Fivehead is saying it, then I believe it. Presumably he means it's, he thinks it's going to go down in price. So if you have it right now, maybe sell it because there are some massive changes to fishing in season two. This next one's a little bit interesting because technically there's no real reason to do this early apart from you just want to be ahead. It might be worth looking at some of the in-game items and trying to collect the transmog for that. If you have nothing to do right now and you have a month before the season two patch actually goes live, then there are some very cool looking items out there. A lot of the Roman stuff, for example, looks really cool. This helm, for example, it i mean it looks very nice and it drops from a variety of different places new world database is absolutely fantastic for this kind of stuff so i will leave a link in the description below but yeah like maybe if you really like roman stuff get out there in brimstone and start killing all the stuff and you know hopefully you'll get some appearances that you actually truly like and that might apply to other places on the map i don't really know at the minute there's sort of like so much out there that it's hard to say and what's cool on new world database you can actually come in here and look at the items in 3d which is very very nice there's quite a few little like catch-up mechanics in season two i don't think for most people that's going to be worth like holding on to i think some of the bags that you can actually craft look cool like if you are actually armoring 200 and you don't have any bags or you don't have very good bags 
these aren't terrible and you know what on the live version my bags aren't that great i might pick these up and craft these myself but i don't really think it's worth prepping it too much i mean if you want to get the mats get the mats but i just wait it's always worth considering if it's worth actually hoarding on to runic leather phoenix with an asmodium the prices when a new patch hits generally like a soul variable they tend to go up initially and then sort of quickly drop back down and then who knows because there's all like little things going on that it's very hard to predict and just in general i wouldn't go spending all your gold because the expansion is probably a couple of months down the line probably four months from around about now i would sort of try and cling on to a lot of your gold sure get your beast ward do the raid do the content you want but I wouldn't necessarily like be trying to get my best in sort stuff just for the last couple of months. I would be personally trying to cling on. But I don't think in this video we really spoke about anything that really would cost a lot of gold. Preemptively buying some beast potions is not really going to break the bank. The beast ward might break the bank. However, I'm personally waiting until that hits the PTR so we can really see what type of gear you're going to need. For example, if light armor is like absolutely wrecked, then medium will be the way to go. Or if you really need DPS because it's very much timed, then light armor might be the only way you can play. So we'll see. I don't want to speculate too much. But that's how I'm personally prepping. And I want to give a big shout out to my YouTube members. And all the people who've been watching and following me over on Twitch, I very much appreciate you guys as well. What you should definitely do for now though is have a most beautiful day. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.